Here we're taking a look at Bosch's intelligent tracking. Please note that we are looking for specific objects and we are classifying objects. So here you see a number of people in the scene uh, on the cameo to the left, which is our pan tilt zoom camera. In this case though, we're not looking for people. Uh, we're also not looking for vehicles. So you can see that the trailer is being identified as a vehicle in our green field. Here momentarily, we'll see another vehicle uh, and it will also be ignored. So here's a car pulling through our field. But again, that's not what we're looking for. In this case, we've programmed specifically to look for bicycles. So in a moment, we'll have a cyclist come through our field and you'll see the PTZ's response. PTZs are notorious for being pointed in the wrong direction uh, or not keeping up with items. Here we have a cyclist who has triggered our field. That is specifically the classification that we're looking for. And the intelligent tracking, AI-based intelligent traffic, uh, will follow this cyclist for 20 seconds before the system resets. That timer can be set to whatever you'd like or until the object is lost. For this next test, we can show how the PTZ not only can pick up objects from its home position, but it can also respond to other fixed cameras in the system. So in the center right, you'll see we've got a person traveling down our sidewalk, but uh, we don't have a task for that. We are again looking specifically for a bicycle and we have this fixed camera reporting to the PTZ. There is no server required. This is all peer-to-peer -peer communication between the cameras. And so now that we have a cyclist, we've triggered that, we are going to send the PTZ to a corresponding preset and initiate tracking. So now that the target's acquired, we are successfully tracking this target for again, 20 seconds in this case, but that is a definable period of time. And as you can see, the tracking performance is even better than a human could likely do with a joystick. Now that our 20 seconds has expired, the PTZ will reset ready to respond to the next event. So as we demonstrated before, the PTZ has the capability to answer to another camera. In the lower right-hand corner, you'll see that not only can it answer to another camera, but it can actually answer to multiple cameras. So here's an entirely different view from an entirely different camera with a region of interest. Here we have a person in that region of interest, but again, because we have object-based classification and detection, we're ignoring the person that goes through this region of interest because we're looking specifically for a cyclist. As you can see, our cyclist is approaching from the left where the person did not trigger a detection, as soon as the cyclist enters their region of interest, a detection will be triggered. It's going to slew to cue the pan tilt zoom. Now that that target is acquired, it will follow that target for 20 seconds, even if it then leaves the original field of view. And as you can see, even though this target's moving fairly quickly, the tracking keeps up with him. Now that the time has expired, the camera will simply go home, waiting the next opportunity. Okay, so previously we saw how the pan tilt zoom can answer to other fixed cameras for specific object detections. Not only can the pan tilt zoom answer to multiple other cameras, but it can also respond differently to multiple events within the same camera. So here we've simulated a perimeter intrusion detection system with a near, middle, and far uh, detection based on uh, like we might see at a fence line at an airport or a big school. Uh, again, it's object specific. So as you'll see our first object going across, we've specifically decided to ignore vehicles or bikes. So here we don't have an intrusion. The same thing can be done for ignoring wildlife and such. But in this case, we wanna know about people going across this uh, perimeter. So as the person approaches, you'll see that the system behaves differently. So here we have a person, they must first be in the first zone and then be in the second zone in order to trigger it. That detection triggers the pan tilt zoom to the appropriate place. And again, we're gonna track for 20 seconds, regardless of where this person goes, whether or not they remain inside the field of view of the original camera. So successfully ignoring the bicycle this time, 
while successfully following the person. Here our 20 seconds has expired, uh, and then after 10 more seconds, the camera will return home. Okay, so for this next example, we're doing the mid-range detection. So we're out at about 400 feet from the camera. Again, we are ignoring vehicles with our dual zone detection. So we're going to ignore the bike as it crosses through our zones. Uh, but again, we're looking for people. We want that dual zone detection and we have a much longer uh, pan tilt zoom preset for this longer detection, 400 some feet from the initial camera. So here a person has set off the perimeter. It's sending the PTZ to the appropriate space. Now that person has been acquired and again will be tracked for 20 seconds. As you can imagine, we can do the same thing at the longer detection zone. So we are actually covering nearly a thousand feet of fence line with a single fixed camera while also being able to get the pixels on target of a PTZ without an operator. There our tracking has timed out and the camera will return home. For this last example, we're gonna really push the envelope. We're nearly 600 feet from the camera, still getting object classifications. Again, we've got a vehicle approaching that fence line, but we don't care about vehicles in this scenario. So the vehicle passes through without any detection, but behind it, we want to know if a person approaches and then goes through our perimeter. So you can see, even at this distance, the person is detected and classified as a person. They enter zone one, we could uh, set a warning for this zone. In this case, we're just alarming on the second zone. There is the detection, and that drives the pan tilt zoom to its preset, and there it has acquired its target even at 600 feet from the camera. You can see even at this distance, we're getting strong pixel density following the detected object uh, for our pre-described amount of time. Once the object is dropped, the camera will return to its home position. You can see the color change indicating that we're no longer tracking this object and the camera will return home.